Hello, friends, and welcome to World Build With Us, the podcast where we create fantastical worlds with help from you, our listeners. My name is Rob Hilferty, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Daniel Quinn and Courtney Staples. On today's episode, we are finishing out our time at the City of a Thousand Vacation Days. This setting was brought to you by our patron, Diplo Raptor. So a big thank you to Diplo for this particular setting. As per usual, this is the second part of a two-part series. So I would strongly recommend going back and listening to that first part, lest you be remarkably confused. Before we get into diving right back into our setting, however, I always want to remind people that if you want us to build your world, you can always go to our website, click the link, follow the instructions, and within a reasonable amount of time, we'll be building your world. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter at Let's World Build. You can also go and join our Discord and chat with us in a more direct sense. We're far more likely to be talking about stuff to you directly. So come join the Discord, chat world building, chat podcast, chat whatever. It's all good. It's all exciting, right? And of course, if you're feeling particularly generous, like our patron Diplo, you can always go to our Patreon where you can give us money and in return, we'll give you access to sweet, sweet patron only goodies like early episodes, patron only episodes, a patron only discord access to too hot for broadcast stuff that just can't make the podcast for all sorts of reasons. Anyway, if you want to do that, you can go to our Patreon. There's a link for that in the description and on our website. And with all of that out of the way, let's dive right back into the episode. So the last we left off, we had a twist that we had to reconcile, which was Big Brother is watching. So Courtney, as the only one here who has a big brother who's not me, and I don't like to start off, why don't you start us off with your reconciliation of the twist, Courtney? (laughs) All right. I had a tough time with this twist, but ended up with the idea that it's referring to the metaphysical concept of Big Brother, which, of Mm -hmm. course, the gnomes in the city have captured and are using to watch everything happening Mm -hmm. in the city. Mm -hmm. But because this concept is so much larger than mere mortals understand and certainly more broad than the ego of the gnomes can comprehend, Uh, It's in turn reporting all of what's happening to a much, much higher power, like a god or council of gods or something to that effect, who are able to see this absolute fuckery of a city going down. So so Uh, names uh, are being written down in a book somewhere is what you're suggesting. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I think that's hilarious. The idea that um, they've literally captured the concept of Big Brother. (laughs) Yes, I agree. (laughs) It's very appropriate. (laughs) <laughs> okay, my my reconciliation for the twist was actually like just a uh, a physical manifestation of this idea. And I think it definitely still works. I, I want to talk about it, though. So, Daniel, you know, Michelle Foucault, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And other people can probably understand there's the concept of the panopticon, right? Uh-huh. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the concept of the panopticon is creating a prison where in the center of the prison, Is a giant tower. It's a giant watchtower and you can't see into it, but it's very obvious that people are looking out, right? Or at least the threat of people are looking out. And I was thinking about that and how Disney kind of works as like a setup, right? Because obviously I'm I'm taking a lot of uh, inspiration from Disney and other theme parks. And in Disney, they use a hub and spoke type of way to create maps for their park. So basically everything's in a giant wheel. And I took that concept. And I'm like, hey, at the center of this wheel, it's just a big old tower. It's a big old Panopticon mm-hmm. watchtower. And I thought that that is essentially the manifestation of Big Brother here in our theme park. Mm-hmm. And what I was thinking about having is just like it will randomly just shine a spotlight onto visitors <laughs> seemingly at random, but but at the same time, maybe not so randomly. Right. So there's this idea that you don't know why the light shines on you and you don't know when the light could shine on you at any moment. So there is always a um, the threat of exposure in some way. And that's Mm. kind of what I wanted to put out there for my reconciliation for Big Brother. At first, I was picturing like the Tower of Sauron, like the Eye of Sauron, just Um, like in the center of this park. But now I'm thinking like, what if it's like a Jumbotron? 
where oh that's like, really a, good yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah. in a way it's like an attention thing too like maybe yeah. you feel special for being up on the screen but in reality it's just fucking like staring you down okay that's that's a much better idea because now i'm just imagining it's a giant scrying ball right mm, so every yeah, every yeah. now and again it'll like click over to someone new and then they look up and like who is it this time right and yeah. it's like catching them in all sorts of like unflattering positions, right? Because <laughs> it's it's seemingly at random. So you could like catch people taking a shit, you know, like catch people <laughs> on a ride, you know? So it's like there's always the threat of it putting you up on the big screen at some point, right? Yeah. So that, that Courtney, that's really brilliant. <laughs> it makes me think too of um, the famous Apple ad of the- uh, Yeah. Yeah. With the hammer throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Throwing that into the into the screen. But I also like the idea of it being like an Epcot ball shaped object because that makes yeah. me think of that iconic image. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's even, mm-hmm. yeah, that's really good too. Holy shit. That is good. And- what would also be neat is if you put your trapped big brother somewhere in there. So while yeah. they're imprisoned, you know, like they're also witnessing the, 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 what the Panopticon is seeing. Mm-hmm. Daniel, I want to push back on that just because I really feel like if they're imprisoning big brother anywhere, it would be in the, it's a small world ride. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> just, for just for maximum oh, no. suffering. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. But no, that that is actually I, I really, really love how that kind of works out. And that's brilliant. Like that that works so mm-hmm. well. The Jumbotron, like, is it a kiss cam? No, please don't. Please stop. Oh mm-hmm. God. You know, like stuff like that. That's really good. Yeah. It's also like a warped form of entertainment in that way because oh, like definitely. a random visit to the park would find it funny to like, oh, look at that person like dropping their ice cream or whatever. That's uh-huh. hilarious. But like it doesn't really strike them how invasive that is until it actually shines on them. Yeah. Right. And it's like, oh, I, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I also imagine that it is also something that people in the line, the endless line can see from a relatively far distance. Mm, right. Yeah. So that way they get a preview of what's happening in the park and they get excited about it. Right. So maybe it's like this kind of like tantalizing lure in to see like, oh, look, everyone's having so much fun. Look at the smiles. And then, Every now and then you'd be like, oh, wow, look, that's so embarrassing for them. So it's like mm-hmm. not understanding that this is happening to people within the park. And like those are real people that are experiencing stuff, you know. Right. Yeah. That's and that's fun. The, the other thing, the, the, the other like kind of subtle aspect to the Panopticon, by the way, is this idea that because there is a constant threat of surveillance, what ends up happening is that you end up policing yourself. Right. If there's always the mm-hmm. threat that you might be exposed at any point less security is required because, oh, you're going to be called out. And so just the threat of being seen is a deterrent in and of itself, right? Foucault talks about this. This is not this kind of podcast, but that's basically the concept (laughs) surrounding it, right? It's also kind of fucked up to think that like, this isn't just a park. It's a a city with, you know, millions of people um, who are living their lives and going about their days. And like, yeah, the fact that they're constantly under that that level of surveillance is oh, yeah. disturbing. Horrible. Horrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel, let's hear from you. What was your reconciliation of the twist for Big Brother is watching? Um, I mean, I I really like what Courtney came up with, and I think it's more specific than anything I was thinking of. I was just trying to think. I definitely don't want it to be something like, oh, it's some some version of what the gnomes are doing because they're already big brother ish being in charge of the park. Mm -hmm. So I thought it's in line with what you were saying that perhaps it's a larger, more um, powerful force like death itself Mm -hmm. since it's death's creeper that was, you know, that's on vacation. And so maybe it's somehow observing what's happening, Mm -hmm. but the concept of big brother itself is better. I think because Mm -hmm. that like is tongue in cheek and it speaks directly to uh, what we're talking about. Hmm. Interesting. Mm hmm. I think it's like a nice blend of the ideas that we've got going here where Mm -hmm. it's like that literal big brother concept, but also the higher power that's sort of looming in the background that maybe we don't need to like flesh out fully, but it's just, it's there, it's waiting and who knows what's going to happen in the hundred plus years when the Reaper comes back from vacation. Mm. I mean, the mere fact too, that he's trapped just like all the other concepts Mm -hmm. is what really makes it fun. I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that them being trapped, it adds a level of perversion to the whole concept as well that I think is more interesting than if it was just like played straight. 
Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So I suppose with our twists, uh, well, I was going to say something else, but with our twists <laughs> reconciled, I suppose we can move on to our factions. Now, for this time, rather than doing a traditional faction full of a bunch of people, what we've decided to do is create a ride and a metaphysical concept that's an embodiment that coincides with that ride. Because it's it's more fun to play around with like what ride you're going to go on, what, you know, what kind of metaphysical concept is represented in that ride, stuff like that. So, Daniel, why don't you kick us off this time? I'm very curious to what you have to say about this one. Um, so I recently went to Disney World because my wife uh, works for a university where they had their conference there. So I had the the experience of going on a bunch of their rides, um, although I'm more of a Universal Studios person because it's a little bit more fun, I think. Um, <laughs> it's it's so certainly the, targeted more towards adults, Universal Studios. So I, I can yeah. understand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you're a Disney adult, but that's a, I, uh, you did not strike me as a Disney adult. Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, although I will say, um, going there as an adult, because I haven't been to Disney World since I don't even remember when I was a lot younger. Mm. Epcot is a lot more fun because oh, I in bet. the past it was boring. It's like, oh, half of it's just countries and you can't do anything. There's no rides. Um, but when you go there as an adult, it's all drinking and eating. And you yeah. can, there's like a billion booths to go to and a billion different drinks. And mm. that's fun. You're selling me on this, Daniel. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm like, that does sound good. I might want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like Epcot was actually kind of fun. And I, I'm not so, you know, as we have established, I don't really care about drinking and eating so much. Drinking I do care about. But, but <laughs> there was a festival happening. Um, so they had a lot of interesting stuff there. Um, anyway, it, and I believe it's in, it's either Epcot or Magic Kingdom. I can't remember because we went to a few of them. The, the old ride that is, um, what it's called too it's it's the one where you're you're looking at technology evolving through history the world it's not the world of tomorrow it's like it's like a carousel that you sit in carousel in of progress yes the carousel yeah. of progress yes so a classic ride um where you have creepy animatronics speak yeah. to you about the past mm-hmm. and currently it ends at the present with a bunch of video screens i for some reason in my head thought the carousel of progress went further into the future and and predicted what things would look like daniel that's because it was built in like the 60s or 70s yeah. and guess what we are in the future to them so <laughs> well right yeah. but, right so, so it's it's present was the future but for some reason in my head i thought that they had updated it and had another section that was like oh here's the future now right mm. and I, I think they have updated it because the way it presents the present is too accurate um <laughs> in terms of the <laughs> animatronics that are there and what i remember about it it was incredibly boring um and really it's just so boring i think we fell asleep at part of it but but my ride i was thinking about is what what does the carousel progress encapsulate um i think it speaks to hope you know what is what can humanity achieve in in the future and and its vision of what's possible and so in this evil gnome hellscape their carousel progress definitely speaks to hope but i imagine it's designed to capture the hopes of those who view it or visit it and add to the ride so i guess you kind of unwittingly contribute to its collection in a sense as your hopes are conferred uh to the carousel okay interesting so Mm -hmm. so what does it manifest as exactly like it's the ride itself you're looking into the future is it what 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 exactly are we experiencing on this ride i think it would originally contain scenes of maybe what the gnomes had perceived as a hopeful Ooh, future. Yeah. But as you're writing it, it starts to take your hopes and place them in the scene. So what it contains depends on who's in the ride. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Okay. And then you lose those hopes because obviously they've been reified. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Yeah. See, that part's important. Yeah. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> So, so when people say don't give up your hopes and dreams, I suppose they mean don't go on this ride. Don't go on this ride, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, I wanted that part to be the case because we moved it a little bit in the horrorish direction. But mm-hmm. the the funny part of it would be that you know the ride is still full of animatronics and mm-hmm. it's goofy and mm-hmm. shittily put together and old. Yes. Yeah. You know, and so that's part of the fun part of it, except for that it has a sinister underpinning. I, I do yeah. want to emphasize that if we're going to be doing like them as a ride, like whatever your hopes and dreams are, 
they are made manifest in the form of janky animatronic and like mannequin. <laughs> yes, you know, like exactly. if your dream is to become like the demon lord or whatever, then your your reified version of that is like a marionette version of the demon lord, something like that. Mm-hmm. I think right. that that's like a fun way to do it and also like evokes the spirit of that kind of ride. Maybe that even um, plays a role in why people's hopes and dreams die out after this ride because they see it in this like really shitty form. Like, Ooh. oh, I don't then maybe that's not such a good idea. That doesn't look yeah. cool anymore. That's like some lame, janky puppet over there. I don't I don't yeah. want that anymore. What happens to the people who get whatever they want? And then this is like, hey, you wanted this. Like you get to see it play mm. out in real life, you know? Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, that's actually that's actually really fun and interesting. There's almost a moral that you can play with this, right? Like there's something that you can really point to and be like, this is a Ray Bradbury, you like short story somewhere. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like that's what this feels like. Full of mangle gnomes. <laughs> God, damn, uh-huh. yes, obviously. <laughs> Although, to be fair, okay, in Something Wicked This Way Comes, you've basically got Mengele gnomes in there. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know. By the way, have I ever told you how upset I was at the ending of that book? I don't think I've read that one. Okay, Something Wicked This Way Comes starts out so strong. Oh, yes, you have talked oh. about this. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, the first third of that book is so strong and then it just like mm-hmm. it literally shits its own ass towards the <laughs> last third. And like I love the wow. writing style, but man, that ending is not good. And if you want to talk about it, come chat with me on Discord because, yo, I had issues with that book. But <laughs> anyway, okay, let's get away from the Ray Bradbury and back into Nightmare Disney. Before we move on, another thing with Daniels to also bring in the big brother thing from the twist is like, if the gnomes are basically tracking all of this hope and dream data as people go through the rides and they're like using it to expand different parts of the park and like yes. make things more attractive to people. So it's that like kind of gross capitalist amalgamation mm. of ideas and, and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Achieve whatever you want for a price. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I yeah. wish I had that available. It's called Google Analytics. Yes. <laughs> I mean, kind of. But, I mean, also, we do have Google Analytics, you realize, but you know, it's well, what I mean, because you can type your hopes and dreams into the search engine, which is all being tracked. Oh, oh, I see. I see. In fact, you can even look at um, trends and see what kind of people are interested in. Oh, God. OK, I don't know what it is with that word, but whenever someone says trend or trending, like I literally like my body has a visceral reaction to that where I like throw up in my <laughs> mouth just a little bit and mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. oh, I, I hate the concept of that word so much. I could have called know? it zeitgeisting. zeitgeisting. Okay. <sighs> Giving something a fancy name doesn't make it any less awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I've seen people try and make that work. It's not going to happen for me. It'll be worse when instead of trending, it'll be uh, just Sydney responding to you saying, go fuck yourself. That's what's going to happen. I mean, honestly, I I think I'd prefer that because at least there's like a a facsimile of like edge and like, genuine, yeah. you know, like there's something to it that is like more than like, oh, it's it's another. OK, we're we're moving. We're moving on. We, yes, we got to yes. move on. Courtney, please move us on. What okay. is your metaphysical concept in ride that we're going with? So I went with more of an attraction than a ride. That's fine. That's what I really mean is attraction. Okay. You know, it All could right. be a ride. All right. Um, so I went with the concept of truth or honesty, which looks Ooh. pretty unassuming as an attraction. It's just one of those like fortune teller machines from a carnival. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Zoltan, right? From Bing. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so in, in the real world, those have like mechanized puppets essentially inside. But of course, here in oh, Gnome, no. in Gnome yeah. Hellscape, it's a person who's been warped into this very stereotypical, like mystical look. Oh, I hate it and I love it. <laughs> oh, it's awful. <laughs> and, and this was extremely popular when it first opened because, of course, everyone wanted to learn some like fun or flattering truth about themselves. So uh-huh. you had these huge lines of people waiting to get their little slip of paper from the machine. But once people read their truth off, their whole demeanor changes because it's not the nice stuff. It's like your husband has been sleeping with the nanny for the past five months or your your children are eagerly awaiting your death so they can inherit all your money or it was your fault that your friend died. Stuff like that. So it's only ugly truth. It's it's yeah, it's basically like. Wait, it's it's the scroll of truth meme. 
Yeah, yes, exactly. it's literally yeah, that. It is oh that. My God. I didn't even think about that. Yes, yeah, that is no, it. that's exactly yeah. what it is. Oh, that's great. Also, <laughs> also, holy fuck, that's twisted and amazing. I love that. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so that that initial excitement has really died down because you know people's lives are being ruined. Uh, <laughs> so the people who still use the machine are generally just those who are brand new to the park or the city really. Um, and they see this attraction of like no wait time. It's like yeah, that sounds cool. Let's do it. And then they have their entire world shattered in front of them. Oh man. I wonder <laughs> how many people take the exit like shortly oh. after reading. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh, oh no. <laughs> There's like a big exit door right next to the next Oh to the fuck, you're so right, aren't you? Oh Jesus, that's awful. <laughs> and you're saying oh, over man. time it became more um unpleasant the truths it reveals. No, I think it was just, I think always. it had always been like that. But at the start, like people expected like fun, interesting oh, okay. things, like going to like a flattering fortune teller type situation mm -hmm. or like reading off a horoscope where it's like, yeah, that sounds exactly like me. And then, but instead it's like, no, you, you did something horrible in the past and yeah. everybody hates you for it. Uh, I wonder, <laughs> um, since part of the gnome's goal is to keep people in the park and continue to ride the rides and mm -hmm. empty themselves, mm -hmm. um, if if some of the things it tells them are seductive in the sense that, um, sure, they are horrible, but it, they still want to know more truths. So you uh, keep coming back, yeah. you know, yeah. like maybe it's mm -hmm. a little bit of a, um, a gin or like it's slightly um, like a monkey's paw. Yeah, it's slightly mm -hmm. uh, not not totally truthful about what it reveals. Like it gives you Ooh. something that's like 95% yeah. of the truth. So you have to come back and ask again of it. Wait, how about instead of like, like a fortune or whatever, it's like two truths and a lie. Right. Uh, and yeah. sometimes the truths that it gives are often so ugly. We'd rather treat them as lies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. like you get up there and you're like, I don't know which one of these is true and which one is it like, it's like devastating. Like, wait, mm -hmm. if any of these are true, I'm awful. You know, like there's stuff like that, that I think would be really fun to play with as well, where you can get like a yeah. mixture of the truth with lie. That is fun. And I also feel like speaking to Daniel, your point about like the gnomes wanting people to kind of go deeper into this cesspool mm -hmm. of a city, the sort of hedonistic approach that might come after learning such terrible things. Like, Yes, some people might just immediately give up, but other people are going to be like, well, if I'm a terrible person, fuck it. I'm going to go just mm, do yes. all this other shit nonstop. Like, it doesn't matter anymore. My life's ruined. Oh, Who yeah. gives a you're shit? Free yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you're free. Pure oh. nihilism. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, wait, here's the thing, right? This is an attraction, but for whom, right? This attraction is not specifically for the people seeking their truth and fortune. It is for the people who know what that ride does and they sit and they watch. Like, I imagine that this is mm. like surrounded by an amphitheater and like people come uh, and watch yeah. them react to the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like that a lot. That's uh, that's gross. But yeah, like it over time, it very like naturally sort of evolves from like, a, oh, yeah, just a machine to like now there are benches around it. And now like yep. there's, you know, bleachers and it's become this entire thing. Well, OK, so some Disney history when the park originally opened, right, like in the, the paths were still paths and everything like that. Walt looked at some of the man made paths, like when people tromped through and like pushed down the grass. And rather mm -hmm. than like, you know, creating fences around it, he basically just paved over those walkways. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically what we're seeing here. It's like, OK, wait, these people are gathering around this booth and it's not to like participate. It's to watch. So mm -hmm. I guess we'll just add in some seating and make it an attraction in and of itself, you know, without people really knowing what it's about. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of the Jumbotron idea, like. Yeah. Imagining like the close up cam on people's faces oh, as they reveal man. their darkest things and yeah. they're like the tears and the anger and the disbelief and like Oh man. Uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's horrible, but good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's so good. Uh so is this still truth or is it like the most twisted funhouse version mirror of a truth that we have? Uh, I mean now it's lovely. I agree. <laughs> Mind you, I agree, but I'm not convinced that it's still truth. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe that's the part that's warped over time. Like, uh -oh. because of how people have treated it, it's become more of this, like, 
disturbing attraction. Oh, maybe it's just maybe it's become twisted and mean spirited. Like it has like a personality. Yeah. It's like spiteful of all of this. Yeah. It's like yeah, I'm, I'm that's not exactly supposed to be used is. for this bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like what the fuck yeah. are you guys doing? I mean, it's trapped. Right? Yeah. It's a trapped yeah, idea, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. That's even better. <laughs> Holy shit. This is so amazing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man, that's good. All right. Um, well, I suppose I'll go because uh, I mean, I'm not beating that, but like I can at least tell you what I've what I've got in mind for mine. So my favorite ride at Walt Disney World is the Haunted Mansion. I love spooky things. I think it creates a great atmosphere. I think that the visuals in it are really interesting and fun. And one of my favorite things when I was younger was going on an Academy Disney tour where they basically you take this guided tour and they'd show you how a lot of the rides work and they point out things like, hey, this is how this works. Right. And and, uh, my most memorable version of that was taking the Haunted Mansion ride. So showing how the ghosts work and how all the spider webs are made out of cotton candy. Stuff mm-hmm. like that was really charming, and I love the spooky atmosphere and the and the like narrative surrounding the haunted mansion. So, I wanted to do a horror ride, right? Because a haunted mansion to me, or a haunted ride of some kind, was really attractive and really fun. And I also wanted to mix in this idea that came up in Discord. So, shout out to Kaiser for bringing this up. Kaiser apparently had some family who worked for Disney as like maintenance and engineering crew. And extolled upon us some of the horrible stuff that they had seen and experienced. So my idea was that this ride is uh, I'm I'm calling it grist for the mill. And the concept of this ride. Oh, it, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just wait. <laughs> OK, so so the way that this works, it embodies this kind of twisted version of uh, the concept that I have is like maintenance. Right. That's kind of what I was playing with. And it starts out as like this fun kind of spooky ride that's also supposed to be like a guided tour of the undercity, right? So the maintenance tunnels, all of the like weird pipes and the dark parts, right? And throughout this ride, you're getting like a a spooky history of the city itself. But what you're also doing is witnessing the horrors of the city and its dark underbelly. So the the literal Mengele stuff that's happening, you're getting exposed to it. But as a ride, you're experiencing this as though it's fiction. However, mm-hmm. what it's actually doing instead is just showing you how the city actually operates in the background without the veneer of Disneyfication to try and save things. Right. So at the end of this ride is where the climax happens, where it essentially drops into a free fall a la Tower of Terror. And the problem with that is that the bottom is a giant grinder and there is a percentage of seats that are just faultily built and designed to drop people into this grinder. And that's my idea. What it's there for, what it does, I don't care. Just the concept that you're losing a percentage of riders to this giant grinder, literal meat grinder, after this kind of narrative spook house thing, that's what I was interested in talking about. And by all means, have at it. So to clarify, the the concept is like maintenance itself or like behind the scenes type stuff. Maintenance is okay. the word that oh, okay. I had in mind. That's okay. correct. Yes. That was my question. Interesting. And maintenance here really um, is, is maintenance. Has it become um, a blender because it's so sick of being trapped by Courtney's idea? Or is it like something else? Metaphorically, and I suppose if we're reifying the metaphor here, the implication is that this city is built on blood and requires mm-hmm. blood to, to run. So the, the reason for this is like, hey, we need blood to run. We're going to need X amount of victims to make sure that this runs. And it just so happens that this is how we get them. Right. Mm-hmm. And remember, they aren't dead. Right. When they go through the grinder. Uh, this is yeah. just, yeah, a, a, a slight reminder that you're going to come out slurry, but you're not dead yet. Yeah, because so nobody can die in the city. Nobody can die. That's right. They can't be murdered. So are they exactly. like literally torn apart or are they like just transformed and then spit back out? No, no. They're literally ground up into a slurry. I mean, it, it oh, is that- a literal <laughs> giant meat grinder. 
uh, again, I wanted to lean into the horror aspect because it's a spooky ride. And also because like, why not just lean hard into horrifying aspects of this world? Is the food, are they reused as food in the park? Um, you know, I never really thought about how they're reconstituted, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Like that wasn't really my concern, but like, honestly, you got to eat, right? So yeah, I wonder because um, like maintenance suggests, you know, like having a stable ecosystem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you've got all that ground meat, like what are you going to do with it? Oh, God. <laughs> Hamburgers and hot dogs, baby, the American right. way. Yeah. yeah. Of and course. then you extend the metaphor because if the people being consumed then become the product, which they're being sold in the yeah. park. You know, yeah. as they're being consumed, they don't ever die in this world. So they're oh moving God. from person to person Jesus in their own guts. You know? This is horrifying. <laughs> also, we made capitalism the villain again. God damn it. It's always. <sighs> it's it al- yeah, always. I know that it's always. But like, or at least consumption, you know. Yes. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Consumption for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which which you could also instead of maintenance, you could also suggest that this is consumption as mm. a, yeah. a ride. Because like metaphorically, like diving into the underbelly of the city is like being digested. So I mm-hmm. suppose that there's that aspect too. Yeah, you know, that's true. Of course, if you survive the ride, then like the metaphor then becomes excretion, I suppose. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, there there's that stuff too. <laughs> another another idea to again tie it back to the big brother twist is like, what if the seats that are released into the grinder are the ones where the people in them recognize that this is all actually happening that's what i was thinking of actually like yeah. those who realize that this isn't a ride like those are right. the people who it kind of like it, it like triggers for them yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah but not all of them i think that if you made it 100 percent, like people would catch on so oh, i think okay. that it'd have to be 50 percent of the people so like you you have to deal with some psychological scarring or like mm-hmm. some survivor's guilt or something like that i think that's far more twisted and fucked up if we do it that way Mm-hmm. Well, and realistically, like if this is a, a business, right, is the they 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 want to minimize the amount of bleed of their own customers. So like it, it might be a percentage that's very small, but it's enough mm. to a keep the illusion intact and b really fine tune the ideology of the space. You know, like when yeah. you have mm-hmm. someone in Disney criticizing Disney internally, like Disney doesn't like that as a brand and, yeah. you know, will do what's necessary to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I think that, that that would be reflected in this ride. Yeah. Yeah. I I do think that's really interesting. Yeah, that's really fun. Also, Jesus Christ, you guys, what what happened? <laughs> what happened to this sick carnival ride that we've created? Like, Jesus Christ, it's amazing. Also, I, I kind of envisioning this as uh, Mr. Bowen's wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get off Mr. Bowen's <laughs> wild ride. <laughs> Oh man, that's that is that a deep cut? Because I know that's like from a '90s computer game. That's right? from like um, what's it? Roller Coaster Tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah, yeah. But like that meme, that meme's like ancient. Like I'm pretty sure oh, that we probably, have listeners yeah. who are younger than that meme, oh, right? God. If you were around before Mr. Bones' Wild Ride was a meme, send us an email. Let us know that we're old and we're crumbling to dust before you. Uh, that would be great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Rides are over. Any other questions or comments about rides and attractions before we move on? I guess the one thing that I had been curious about before, but then in bringing up the idea that maybe these people become food for other people is like, yeah, how does the food work in this city? Like, can animals also not die? Or is it just... Oh, shit. Yeah, that has to be correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's horrifying. Im- importing and exporting, just like Disney World, nothing is made there. Everything is imported. Yeah, third party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And it speaks to the metaphor of Disney itself. Well, the metaphor of really is just it's the way it behaves. Like it doesn't originate anything. It just repurposes it and recycles it, mm, puts it on yeah. display. <laughs> there. Okay. I don't know why, but I'm definitely bringing in a lot more theory than I normally do. But Jean Baudrillard literally talks about this in Simulation Simulacrum because it's like the the what. You, OK, I'm not getting into this, I'm not getting into this because it's going to take too long. But yes, just know that I know that that's a thing. And they literally talk about that and how it's like 
hype lined nostalgia essentially in the hyper real and the real whatever okay we can have this it's done it's over i'm getting over myself okay <laughs> can we move on to a main storyline quest because i feel mm-hmm. like something like unveiling a, a, a quest line or like a narrative within this is going to be horrendously fucked up so yeah. what are we doing are we just creating like hey survive the city you know like as tourists or is it there's there's got to be something more complex or interesting happening than that right i mean i've i've worked at both disney world and universal studios and i think it would be interesting to be an employee okay mm-hmm. that way from the narrative's perspective you get a different um view of mm-hmm. of the place because the employee doesn't necessarily see everything but they do see the experience of the visitor with different eyes and they do see some of the inner workings of the place i'm okay and with that yeah mm-hmm. that's sounds be amazing. disturbing both angles yeah okay so who are we embodying here what crew member cast member sorry are <laughs> we embodying like who who can see chunks of the park but not all of the park you know i'm picturing like a gangly awkward teenager type who like Mm -hmm. has started fairly recently and like daniel you were talking about last episode how you kind of got shuffled around to different uh, roles every Mm -hmm. every day or whatever every shift so like they are gradually seeing more and more things and maybe because of the specific roles that they've been assigned to or the timing of it they've seen maybe a bit more than most other people their age get to see Mm -hmm. and it's starting to like dawn on them what's happening Yes. And I bet you do make friends too with others there. Yeah. Like I can yes. see if you're going to build um, a party, potentially this is an RPG, or you're going to look for some principal characters in a story. I could also see um, like a face character, like, mm-hmm. you know, a princess mm-hmm. or a mascot being added to this group. Or a handler of those mascot characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, one of the reasons why I would mention a princess in particular is because when I grew up, I knew a couple of girls that were like identical twins who were obsessed since they were children with being a Disney princess, like working at the park, mm-hmm. but to work at the, it's a modeling job, like to work, you have yeah. to meet certain requirements and they just were never going to meet it. Not that they weren't, yeah. they were pretty girls, but they just weren't like the type that is needed. Yeah. For that. yeah. And so they would try year over year over year to get in. And so I think it'd be interesting for the supporting cast to this teenager to be one of those princesses, perhaps that's mm. actually in the role, you know, because that, I also think that mm-hmm. kind of character gets a little bit closer to at least the way the park presents itself because mm-hmm. they're going to have a lot more exposure to the brand and how they need to conduct themselves to yeah. be part of it. I'm going to toss in some of my own teenage history here as well and suggest that we should probably have someone in food services do that work yes. as well. Yes. So, so what I'm seeing here is that our principal cast are people who have their own different like visions into the dark underbelly mm-hmm. of the kind of undergoings in, in the city itself. So food yeah. service. Yeah. You see, you literally see how the sausage is made and mm-hmm. it's mostly because it's grist for the mill or, <laughs> or it's because of something else. But yeah, food service definitely in there for sure. Princess cast member, you know, like character cast member, a hundred percent. I'm down. So Courtney, I suppose we need to, we need you to add in your own third cast member here that we can add. Yeah. As a teenager, gangly teenager. Yeah. But like, what's the purpose of the teenager? Like, yes, they're new to the company, but what do they do? Yeah. I guess I was picturing them in like a role of either not a princess type character, but like a more minor character. Okay. Or like a food service type thing, or they could be like a, a janitor type role even, or you know, I was going to say info that, desk yeah. kind of. We were mostly janitors and slash cart yeah. people and food yeah. cart people or sales people. You know? wait, yeah, wait, yeah. We haven't even talked about souvenirs yet, have we? Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Merchandising. Yep. Yeah. We're missing <laughs> out, you guys. We need someone who's <laughs> like, oh, come on. We need a souvenir person for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. So, you know how Disney has a bunch of pins and stuff, collectible pins? Yeah, constantly. Every fucking booth. Exactly. Mm. Okay. This person is a walking pin board. Uh, So they uh, walk around and they jingle and jangle as they walk and like, hey, you can have this pin. And they're like pulling Mm. them out of their body as they're like presenting them. (laughs) That's cool. It it reminds me of, because like in the parks, you also have the wandering photographer trying to sell you a picture 
and and it's in a sense is that a thing in disney is it really oh yeah there's constant list photographers always trying to like lure you over so they can take a picture and then try to sell it to you i did not know that that's scummy as fuck and it's in universal too yeah like they're in your but like the wandering kind of salesperson is a concept because you've got that you've also got in a sense the booths that are outside are wandering in that sense Mm -hmm. you know like so that makes sense Oh, I, I like overly aggressive salesperson as an archetype mm-hmm. as well. That's really fun because then you have a face character, right? You have someone who's like kind of charming or something like that. Yeah. Oh, you could easily run this as an RPG with all these archetypes. Like Daniel, <laughs> yeah. this is an OSR plus game for sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The theme park. When I wonder too, like if you had that one, if that might be separate from say the janitor who is the gangly teenager, because the gangly teenager is um inexperienced gangly and probably mm-hmm. not want to be presented to people because for, for me for yeah, example yeah. they didn't want to have me in any position where i was too in front of the public like <laughs> being able to sell yeah. like a lemon slush is fine in their eyes but i'm not going to be working in like one of the fancy stores like i was Shuffle always off i go clean, yeah i was like <laughs> I was like clean the fucking bathroom or the or like be a busboy in a, in one of the restaurants. I was never mm-hmm. like important enough to be anything else. Oh so that a teenager, I think, would be the bottom rung. Then you have the salesperson. Then you'd have the face, and you have the person in food service. Like they're all in different roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. That's good. Okay, so what's bringing these archetypes together? Because we need something to kind of move them and force them into a, a singular entity as a as a party, right? So what's what's doing it here? Uh, a ride malfunction. Oh, let's. Yeah, no. The metaphysical concept has had enough of this shit and tries to like escape or like get bust uh, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. a concept escapes. I mean, and a ride malfunctions. Those are two cool events. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm gonna add a third one. And mm. one of their employees, one of their friends in this group, vanishes. Mm. Oh wait, wait. Okay, vanishes or was on the ride that was malfunctioning, and that ride yes. is now like on a runaway or something yes. like that. Yes, they were on yeah. the ride and they disappeared. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh man. Okay, that's really good. <laughs> Holy shit, that's really really excellent. Okay, and and obviously, right? They have to navigate because c- the company, the 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 gnomes behind it, right? They're like, just do your job. Like, we'll take mm-hmm. care of it. Just do your mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. like that kind of thing. But they're like, no, we care about this person. We want to make sure that wait, 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 wait. Is that cast member a princess? So they literally have to save a princess. Save the princess. Oh, yes. that's yeah. hilarious. Come yeah. on. Yeah. That's oh, fun. and maybe maybe the one in the party is like what you were talking about, Daniel, the one who wanted to be the princess, but just didn't have the right <gasps> look for it. She's in it. a different Ooh. job. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, the yes. shitty job. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's good. That's so good. So oh like there's God. some like maybe some interparty conflict where like uh-huh. I don't really care that much if we find her or like yeah. maybe like actively sabotaging it. And maybe they're torn, like maybe they're related to them. Like we could borrow from reality, like it's literally their twin, not an identical yeah. twin, but yeah. she didn't make the cut, so she's oh, like stuck like, in the shitty job. Yeah. Or, or it's like, oh, she got the job that I wanted. And it's yeah. like just a different type of princess, you know. Right. Like, one is beauty and one is pretty, you know, like something like mm-hmm. that. Like, oh, I can man. see her then them along their journeys going to the ride that tells the truth or tells the tells the messed up truth. But, but the evil ride would tell her like, oh, you never loved your sister. You're an asshole and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Ooh, yeah, that's you know? good. That's really good. And they have to overcome that. OK, <laughs> hold on. If we're running this as an adventure, because, you know, the archetypes ahead of time. You're going to give them the two truths and a lie. And then yes. you tell the player you decide oh. which is true and which isn't. Yes. Come on. Oh, Come I've got to make this the game. Good. That is good. Gotta turn that this into good. one of the settings. Do oh, it. Fuck. Oh, fuck. Yeah, good. this is amazing. Uh, you even have uh, the evil gnome race already, didn't you? Yes, I already have. We already played <laughs> them, you know? <laughs> oh, man. I played one. Okay. Even system agnostic, the concepts that are in here are so fucking strong. Like, I'm going to be using this shit for sure in games ahead of time. Like, I don't even care. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and mechanically, too, if you, even if you try to carry the idea that no one dies, like, if you're turning that into a game, that, that can be a mechanic because it explains what will happen if you're taken out of the action. You know, like, yeah, so it must mean that you're you get smashed by something and someone has to fix that. You know, like, it's you yeah. don't die necessarily. You're still in the ride. You're still in the game. Yeah, you'll come yeah. back yeah. later or something like that. after uh-huh. you get fixed up some setback you know and, and mm-hmm. honestly it like high lethality could work for this because you're not actually dead but you you certainly right. are taken out right or permanent death you know quote unquote death 
is not when you're like murdered. It's when you get slurried and turned into a hot dog, right? Like, <laughs> when you're like basically sent to languish somewhere where you cannot escape, you know, you're putting to mm. in a mobile state of constant immortality and pain, you know, your, your sense of the break room. Oh, the break. It's literally breaking your bones. Like the <laughs> break room. Like, come on. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep. Okay. I absolutely love what this turned into. Mm -hmm. uh, it is horrifying and hilarious and all sorts of like fun and fucked up all at the same time. So a big mm -hmm. thank you to Diploraptor for sending in this prompt. I feel like we're, we've wrapped up pretty well, right? Yeah, I guess another thing. Daniel, what was your um, concept ride thing again? Hope from the carousel. Prompt. Oh, right. Right. Hope. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Maybe part of the key of solving the problem is to retrieve some of the hopes. Oh. So like oh. maybe we learn in the story that even the concepts have hopes. Like mm -hmm. so like the unique mm -hmm. thing about hope is that even the concepts themselves have hopes. And that's why this one has broke free to escape. It has a, a hope of escaping. So yeah. part of it is going to the carousel of progress and retrieving the necessary hopes, almost like magic items, you know, in order mm -hmm. to fight the larger administration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was thinking that you're going to utilize that hope ride to like gather an yeah. army or like that's the key for yeah. like breaking out essentially, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. But you also have to be careful because the panopticon is always, there's always yeah. a chance that it'll focus oh, yeah. on you and kind of spoil your plan. Oh, that's great. Like, that's also a mechanic. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Like every, I don't know, X amount of time the GM rolls a die to see if mm -hmm. the panopticon has turned its gaze towards your party or something. Random encounters get generated. That's absolutely yeah. a, um, like a clock in modern yeah. games. Well, yeah. th that, that's actually what I was going to suggest is that rather than have mm -hmm. it be like pure randomness, because that can be like kind of not fun. Like yeah. maybe actions that you take can increase the notice oh, level yeah. or something cool like too. that. Yeah. So like if you if you cause mischief, you're probably mm, more yes. likely to be noticed by the panopticon. Yes. Yeah. That goes back to like, remember how we were reading the Alexandria and he talked about, um, he has an example of like recasting how breaking into the Death Star would work if you, mm -hmm. if you handle mm -hmm. rolling stealth checks, where it's like when you take risky action, then you have to check as opposed to like every time you do something. So in the mm -hmm. sense here, it's like when you do stuff that catches the notice of the park, you have to check against the pet optimizer. Yeah. 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 That's good. I like that. That's really good. I like that. Okay. Oh, and because man. you're, because you are employees, you are probably still kind of expected to act in those roles, mm -hmm. even as you're running around. So like the, the Ooh. not princess character still has to like try to act all cheery when like a yes. group of kids runs up yep. to her and stuff. You still have to provide food, even though yep. you're nowhere near your cart, you know, <gasps> like stuff like that. You have to improvise. Princess has her hand behind her back and it's like bleeding because they just like got out of some adventure and she has to like yep. wince and smile as the kids yep. come to her, you know. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you can't point with one finger because that's right. aggressive, right? Yep. So yeah. Gotta be at least three. Yeah. <laughs> of course, if, you, if your hand gets mangled and you only have one <laughs> finger left, what are you going to do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, man, this is so gloriously fucked up. That's great. Yeah. Wow. All right, guys, I think we're good. I think we're, mm -hmm. are, do we have anything else that we need to talk about? Because this has been a f literal fun house that we've created here. <laughs> I, I just love how it all came together. It was uh, not at all what I thought of when no. I first read that prompt. But... Not even a little bit. <laughs> not even a little bit. Mm -hmm. No, we've, we've twisted and warped this into a glorious abomination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh all right so so if there's nothing else let's roll right into it a big thank you again to diplo for the setting and remember if you want us to build your world and just witness the horrors we can create you can go to our website worldbuildwithus.com where you can click the link follow the instructions and within a reasonable amount of time we'll be building your world come join us on discord chat with us about the the kind of rides that you would create or the type of people you would want to be in an RPG like this or listen to in a story. You can follow us on social media over at Let's World Build, where we tweet about stuff. And if you're feeling particularly generous like Diploraptor, you can always give us money over on Patreon, where you'll get access to early episodes, patron only episodes, double length episodes for submitted prompts and all sorts of other goodies. And you can find out more on our Patreon. So. Think about it this way. 
If you want to use some of the concepts or if you want to steal from us wholesale, joining our Patreon is just a little thank you. It's like a tip jar, right? That you can just toss in and say like, hey, I use this for my idea for my game. You can use it, whatever. Just let us know how it goes. Honestly, I'm, I'm always excited when people tell us like, hey, I use this part from this setting and it worked really well. So come to Discord. Tell us all about that. And with all of that out of the way, that's going to do it for this episode of World Build with us. Remember that we love you very much, and we're going to get through this together until next week. <laughs> <laughs>